Hey there, fourth grade French horns. I hope that you guys are having a good uh, week and I hope you had a great weekend. Um, hope everything is going well and hope you guys are, are sticking with it and doing okay. Um, <clears throat> first quick note, I just want you to know that these videos are not meant for you to feel overwhelmed by them ever. Um, these are simply if you have time and you're able and you're wanting to continue with your instrument while you're home right now, okay? Um, I understand that you guys have a lot of other work that you have to do for other classes, and I want you to make sure you focus on, you know, your math stuff and your ELA stuff and all that kind of stuff first. And then if you have time and you're able to, to do some of these band lessons, then awesome, all right? And again, you don't have to feel like every time I put a new lesson out that you have to jump to it. Um, if you want to stay with some of the stuff we've been doing from last week or the week before and spend a little extra time on that, perfect, do that. Because on the, in the end, it's really going to be developing those strong fundamentals, right? And feeling really confident with the early stuff before you, you know, push yourself to, before you're ready to go on to the new stuff. So if you spend extra time, you know, focused on, you know, the first three notes and some of those songs, then you're going to actually be a stronger musician in the end rather than trying to just fly through it if you weren't ready for it, okay? So these videos are available. That doesn't mean you have to jump to the new one each time, okay? You take these all at your speed and do them however is best for you, okay? All right, awesome, guys. So let's get started. <clears throat> Always, let's start with our mouthies. Go ahead, do some tonguing. Go ahead, make sure the corners are nice and firm. Nice flat chin. start with our warm-up. <clears throat> Last time I taught you the three note scale, right? Starting on our C and then going to D and then going to E. Today we're going to add two new notes to that scale because you've learned those two new notes in your book. So we may as well add them to our scale. So it will no longer be a three note scale. It will be what? A five note scale. So we're going to now play our five note scale starting on our C. So we're going to go C, D, E, F, and G. All right, let's just play that scale going up um, from the C up to the G with whole notes. Remember, this is a whole note. How many beats does a whole note get? Four. Here we go. From the beginning, breathe in between the whole notes whenever you need to. Here we go. One, two, ready, and... Good. Stop right there. That was our high G. We have to think firm corners and think really fast there and use our stomach muscles, right? Because that is the highest note we've learned so far. All right, can you guys just start on the high G and we're going to go back down to the low C. High G first. Two, fast there and... always, always, we need to listen to the sound that's coming out of our bell, all right? Always be listening. For scales, they're always supposed to just step up. If you are playing along and you're trying to play a scale and you hear it jump, it means you just skipped a note. So we need to make sure we don't jump at all in scales, we just step, all right? Each note steps up and then steps back down, all right? Cool. Guys, let's play that whole scale from the bottom all the way to the G back down without stopping this time. All right. Our five note scale. Just so you guys know, 
You're the first group to have gotten to a five mil scale. Good job. Here we go. So I'm gonna receive one, two, ready, and. <laughs> So I'll be fair and I'll say that even though you're the first group to actually have gotten there, there are other groups that will get there in this lesson. Yours is just happens to be the first one that I'm teaching. But trumpets, baritones, and tubas will also get to their five note scale today. All right, cool. So, and everyone also get there very soon. Um, they just had slower first lessons because of how much longer it takes for them to put their instrument together and learn how to put it together. You guys and baritones and tubas and trumpets have it much easier where you just have to put a mouthpiece in. <laughs> All right, but you guys are doing great and keep going. You guys are awesome. All right, so that was our, our whole notes with our five note scale. Now let's do quarter notes with our five note scale. So remember quarter notes look like this. They get how many beats? Just one. And we're gonna play up our five note scale, tonguing every single note with quarter notes. One, two, ready, and. to the book. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to go first and do a review song. So page 8A, let's do number 1.23, even higher as our review song. So you guys practiced this one last week. All right, so let's start with that one for today. This one is the first song you have that high G in, all right? So, but hopefully you guys were practicing this one. So we're just going to play straight through it. Uh, make sure you try to stay with me. Don't rush. All right, if you feel like you're slowing down, that's okay. Um, that just means that you should spend some more time on this song. So maybe go back to last week's video and spend some more time or just pause this video um, and you know, focus on those little sections, those measures that are messing you up. All right, we talked about this last week. Focus right on those, air band up first a bunch of times, then just play those measures by themselves. If you can do them three times perfectly, then you can move on, all right? And then I promise you, you will be able to play it so much better. All right, and you'll hopefully be able to play it right with me. Okay, 1.23, even higher. Let's just play and hold our first note to make sure we all have it in our ear. <clears throat> so there's our high G. So for French horns, we always have to try to make sure we are ready for that first note. And it takes a lot of figuring out what our embouchure muscles have to do and setting them like, Get them ready before you actually play the note. So we know this is a high note, so we're gonna already think firm embouchure. And then it'll, like, as we do this, it'll get better and better, and you'll get more confident with these notes. All right, another thing that we can do for right now, if we need to start with our low C, if that's an easy note for you to find, you can start there. You can go up your five note scale to the high G, or you can just go, C, then to E, and then to G. Remember, no fingers for these three notes. These are all three notes that are open. C, E, and G. Just play those three notes with me. Good, so now just play the high G. Good, and that's where we're gonna start. Notice what your embouchure, these muscles have to do to play it. Here we go, from the beginning, 1.23, even higher. One, two, ready, and. Rest, rest. Rest, 
jump down. with what we just practiced, going like C, E, G. At the very end, it, it does that backwards from G, E, and then down to C, right? So that's jumping. It's not stepping like a scale, it's jumping down. So that's also important for you to really notice and be aware of and be ready for our, with our armature muscles. Cool. Also, did you notice the last four measures, if you count back from the end, four, it starts on that low C, and it steps up like your five note scale, except this one's just a four note scale, right? And then it has a rest and then it goes to that fifth note. So these scales are everywhere. Our music is all based on them, okay? So as we start to get to know these scales, it's gonna help us with our music and it's gonna help make all these connections, okay? They're so important. So always start your practicing with your five note scale from now on. And you can play with the whole notes, you can play with those quarter notes, you can do both. You can even do something different, half notes and quarter notes. You can mix it up. You can pick. But it's just so important that we actually do it. All right, so guys, let's turn our page over. If that felt pretty good and you're ready to move on, then we are going to move on. Go to page 9A. 9A, we're going to take a look at 1.24, Down by the Station. Do you guys know this song? This is a pretty well-known song. Um, it's an older song. You can see it says at the, at the end of the song, it's an American folk song, all right? So this, this is cool because at the end of each song, it always tells you where it's from or who, who wrote it. <clears throat> if it's a folk song, that means it's been along for, around for a really long time, all right? And it's one that we might not necessarily even know exactly who wrote it, but... It's been around, yeah, for a long time. So down by the station is like, down by the station, early in the morning. You guys know this one? I don't know. You might not. I think I sang it in like general music class, like my class music when I was in elementary school. But I don't know if Mrs. Frigno does this one with you guys, but it's a good one. So maybe your parents will know it if you don't. <laughs> All right, guys, take a look at this one down by the station. It starts out on our low C. Let's air band it first. All right, here we go. Air band it. Two, ready, and C, C, D, E, E. Okay, stop right there. We've got this blue words over the top of where we just got to, and it says breath mark, and it has a little comma. Okay, so anytime in music you see a comma above the staff, like we do right there, it's called a breath mark, and it means to breathe, right? Because as musicians of band instruments, we have to breathe to play them. So in music, a lot of times they'll tell you when the best place to breathe is, okay? And it's normally after like a longer note, like those half notes right there. So those are good places to breathe. Anytime you see that comma, it's called a breath mark in music, and it means to breathe. So let's go back to the beginning, air band it with me one more time, and we'll practice putting in those breaths. Ready, and C, C, D, E, E, breathe. D, C, D, E, C, C, breathe. Now you say the notes. two, three, four. Okay. This might be a good one to pause the video, go back and just work on little spots because this has some tricky measures in there. Okay. If you're not sure where exactly to, to work on, um, we're going to play it right now and you'll know very quickly which are the harder spots. Okay. So the spots that you hesitate on, that you find that you're, you're like a little nervous about, that you're pausing, um, that's where you need to focus on. Okay. So here we go from the beginning, play this together, take your time, <clears throat> try to stay right with me. Um, but again, you'll try to notice where you're hesitating so that you can focus on those little spots from the beginning, starting on our low C one, two, ready, and 
song you might find that you need to breathe more often and that's okay all right breathe when you need to breathe but try to also breathe in those breath marks and as you get to know this song and as you're able to start playing it faster it'll make it easier to actually breathe in those spots all right because you won't have to breathe as often when you play it a little faster okay but focus first on taking your time going slow learning the rhythms and learning the notes and making sure our fingers are doing the right stuff all right, and we're also tonguing everything. So many things to think about when we play an instrument, right? And read music. Okay, let's do one more song for today. 1.25, Some Folks Do. All right, this will be our last song that we do today. So underneath Down by the Station and before this next one, it talks a little bit about um, this composer named Stephen Collins Foster. All right, and you can read... All that information about him, he wrote some um, really important like American folk songs that everybody knows, all right? <clears throat> um, and you can read the different things about what was happening during that time in art and in the world. Okay, so let's take a look at 1.25, Some Folks Do. It says there, before you play, draw these symbols where they belong. Treble clef, time signature, and the final bar line. So you're going to take your pencil... Make sure you use a pencil, and you are going to go ahead. You can draw your, your treble clef, also known as your G clef, and then you can, um, let's see, draw your time signature, so that's like your 4-4, four, four, right? So look at the examples from the other songs and how you draw that 4-4 four, four and where on the lines, the staff, it goes. And then at the very end, draw that final bar line. All right, here we go. I want you to pause the video and air band it. And after you have done that, we are going to play it together right now. Here we go. Starting on the E. So let's make sure we find the E. Or you can start it with your low C. Just get that E in your ear. All right. Here we go. From the beginning, tonguing every single note, sitting up nice and tall with that bell resting right on your leg, your right leg. Here we go, beginning, two, ready, and... two songs. They are not easy. 1.24, Down at the Station, and 1.25, Some Folks Do. Remember, air band at first. Air band just the little measures that are trickier. Then just play those measures. Then start putting it all together. All right? Guys, I hope that you have an awesome week. Um, don't forget, click that link below the title of this video and just fill it out quick. Do it right now so you don't forget later. I just want to know what you've been practicing, what you've been up to. Um, I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye, French horns.